Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Ash. And this is F1 Fanatics. So guys, we are here. It has been a long time. The three week break, it is over. We are back for another race preview and we are at Spa this weekend. I mean, we are not at Spa this weekend, but we are watching Spa this weekend. And we love the action and we are so excited for it to be back. Um, so guys, if you are new here, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, click on that bell notification and you can keep up to date with all our latest F1 content. Um, but in today's video, we're gonna do our usual kind of look at some stats from the track, Mike's amateur lap, look at last year's race, look ahead to this year's race and then you guys can be free of us for another video. Right, shall we start off with some stats? Definitely. Shall I start off with some stats? Yes. Right, so this is one of, uh, this is the longest circuit on the F1 calendar, being just over seven kilometers long. There are 44 race laps. Its first race was in 1950, and it was, uh, has the fastest lap. There we go, just remembering my stats off the top of my head. Who was it? Valtteri Bottas. He uh, posted a 1 minute 46 uh, last year to get the fastest lap on the circuit. Now Ash, over to you for some more fun and fabulous stats. So, Spa as a track was first built in the 1920s and it was a combination of public roads between towns and villages in the area. The track was redesigned in 1979 to the layout that we see today and it is now half the length of the original track. Interesting one to put out there. And still the longest. And still the longest, exactly. So, the as Mike said, first race at Spa was in 1950. It was one of the original seven races on the F1 calendar and it was won by Juan Manuel Fangio in an Alfa Romeo 1-2 nonetheless. Oh, maybe. maybe shocking to see that this weekend. <laughs> maybe, maybe history repeating itself. I mean, this maybe. would have to be a crazy race. Probably. Kimmy! <laughs> and then one more is the fact that Spa, as a track, always has the cars on the edge of their abilities as long as it is dry. If it is wet, on the other hand, it is always eventful with the drivers managing to show their class and hopefully keeping their cars on the black stuff. And guys, it is, I think, either wet or dry. We are just really excited to see F1 cars back on the circuit, which needs us nicely. So again, still not updated with the F1 2019 game, but it might be there in time for Monza. You never know or it might be Singapore. One of the two. I'm getting it very soon. But for now we are still on the 2018 game and I'm on track and it is a return to what you obviously highly anticipate in any F1 Fanatics preview and that is my amateur's lap. So guys, here we go. So guys, here we are. We are back after the summer break for another Mike's amateur lap and we are here at Spa. It is the longest track on the circuit and it is a really high speed one as well so here we go here's the lap starting and oh look it's already started off amateur locking up into one but managed to get it round not too bad there and obviously coming up to the famous Eau Rouge sequence and uh, it is flat out through here and it is an incredibly fun part of the circuit to drive and now we come into the second DRS detection zone I remember Marcus Ericsson and Hartley kept trading places here quite a lot last year. And then we now turn into the corner here. Did that sequence of corners rather nicely actually. This is the part of the track where the Mercedes and the Red Bull will catch up with the Ferrari better. And then we go around this long right hand, almost going back on itself. Um, sliding through the corners here. So yeah, like I said more um, aerodynamic cars will suit that bit better but now back favoring the ferrari and oh another amateur mistake how could we not have it running wide very wide on the corner there 
Um, break it down here again. You are using the high gears so much on this circuit. Oh, a little bit of slow there going through. And then again, another quick corner, a little bit of braking just to get you through. And then it is pretty much flat out for the rest of this section. And this is where the Ferraris are really going to come into their own. Also, nice and wide track here at Spa. So there is plenty of opportunities for overtaking if you can gain the distance on those straights. Um, but yeah, we come here closing to the end of that, guys, and very early on the braking, very slow through those last two corners. And here we are on the home straight again, lap completed, another Mike Amateur's lap done. Hope you enjoyed, guys. See ya! So, guys, there it is, and you know, at times I actually thought I looked pretty good in the lap. But of course there were still mistakes because it wouldn't be a Mike's amateur lap without being amateur. Um, so yes, F1 2018 leads us on to the Formula 1 2018 Grand Prix at Spa. And I think the first point to probably mention from last year's uh, race ash is probably turn one. Yes, it was eventful, shall we say. But the one thing that needs to be made clear on this was Halo had its first finest hour. Well, Charles Leclerc, would he be in a Ferrari this year if we hadn't brought the Halo in? It certainly would have been a nastier accident. Yes, whenever you see a car going airborne, you know that it's not likely to be the nicest of incidences, but Nico Hülkenberg, late on the brakes, locked up incredibly. Uh, it's the only way to describe it. He was full on slide, power uh, slide. He had at that stage he had no control over the car into the back of Alonso, who got launched over the top of Charles Leclerc's Sauber. So yes, and when you see the pictures of the tyre impression on the halo, you can see how lucky Charles Leclerc was that that incident wasn't yeah, serious. I mean, it was pretty scary, and the state that Fernando's McLaren was in as it went over the Sauber, in terms of it was ripped to shreds. Yes. I mean, these cars literally, when they crash, fall apart into their crash mechanisms. And it is pretty scary to see, and I, I think it is, Fantastic that now these things are at risk in Formula One, but nobody got seriously hurt and it was a pretty major crash. Yeah. Um, I think probably the other incident is there is Bottas losing his front wing and uh, colliding, uh, also locking up, sliding into Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari. And um, yeah, that gave him a puncture and he was able to get round and get in the pit stop but I think the damage done from that puncture uh, forced him then to retire on lap nine. Yeah, it was an unfortunate incident there for Kimi. It mm. was something out of his control, but where have we seen Valtteri Bottas losing his front wing on the first corner before? Oh God, Valtteri. Yeah. So, will we have an eventful start this year? Um, I think we will. There's quite a few attacking drivers and I feel that some break nerves. They've been out of the car for a while. I, mm, it, it is a tight one as well, which yeah. any tight corner leads to things a little bit difficult. It is quite an easy corner to lock up, as you saw on my amateur lap, locking up into turn one. And um, also, with it, well, we should probably talk about the podium then. It was uh, Sebastian Vettel's last win in a Ferrari car, so it is coming up to a whole year since Sebastian Vettel has got a win, which is crazy, really. Um, Lewis Hamilton came in second, uh, Max Verstappen third, and probably note to Valtteri Bottas, who, with that front wing change, ended up at the back of the grid and was able to kind of fight his way through the field and overtook Sergio Perez. Uh, I think with about four laps to go um, to secure that fourth spot. So it was actually a very good drive from him on the day. Yeah, it was successful for him, but once again... Lock up cost him. Where could exactly. he have been if he didn't lock up? 
Yeah. It's if, nuts, if, buts and maybes. They're always there, aren't they? Exactly. They're always there. Um, probably another point uh, to talk about was the Force Indies. It was a superb weekend for them, wasn't it? Was, yes. The car, re well, the car was, I was going to say is, um, but the car was suited to Spa. Mm. Set up, looked great for them, gave them an opportunity to qualify well, and as we know in Formula One, a good qualifying on Saturday does usually set you up quite nicely to have a good Sunday. So take note, any of those teams that are in and around Formula 1.5, good qualifying is what you need to get. Fifth and sixth for them last year was an absolute superb performance. I think probably the only last thing of note to remember from last year's race was that small uh, battle f with two drivers who are now no longer in F1, and that is uh, with Marcus Ericsson, who is obviously now in IndyCar, and Brendan Hartley, who has signed up to Formula E for next season, so both in single-seater separate championships now, but it was quite a funny one because they battled kind of throughout final position. I think Brendan Hartley did fall off to about 14th in the end, but they just basically kept on using DRS to overtake each other. So it was like yeah. one's past each other, oh, he's now got DRS past the other one again. And it was just a nice little tug along throughout. But Marcus Ericsson securing the points for Sauber um, much better than his teammate Charles Leclerc, who was uh, obviously, yeah, as oh, we chat, Pan bombarded in corner one um, but I think moving on to this year's race Ashley um, what, what are kind of thoughts ahead of this race well the big news for this weekend with regards to potential results is the potential upgrades to power units mm. for both the Mercedes and the Red Bull so starting off with Red Bull Honda have come out and said that the power unit is ready for Spa. We don't know whether it's going to be used yet. We won't know until Friday morning when the tech report comes out as to what upgrades are on the cars. The only thing is that if they do decide that they want to use it this weekend, then Max Verstappen will have to be taking grid penalties. So he is already on his third engine of the season. So a grid penalty would be like, well, wouldn't be likely, would be a definite in that situation. Yeah. The one thing to say with that though, is that Honda believe that with that upgrade, they will be on par with Mercedes for the power. So, brings them closer. Mercedes now, well, they've been saying that the summer break for them has been working on more engine power. They're trying to close down the gap in the power unit performance between themselves and Ferrari to see whether they can have a bit more straight line speed. Well, a bit more oomph. Yes, and the advantage that they have is both Hamilton and Bottas are only on their second power unit of the season. So they would be able to introduce their new engine without any grid penalties. That reliability has been, been so good in that Mercedes, and it it just gives them so many options in this scenario, does. doesn't it? So it is one of those where any predictions that we make are likely to change <laughs> when that tech report comes out, because at this moment in time, Ferrari are the car that's best suited to this weekend, but with upgrades to the engines, then that could be shaken up a little bit. Agreed. Um, for, for me, thinking ahead to this weekend, it is a real chance for those teams talking about it before. It has been a long summer break. They're reaching to get back in those F1 cars and a good result and a good performance, especially some of those cars in the midfield, thinking of Renault in particular, can really set the tone of this second half of the season and where they're going to go. And if it is Ferrari who are able to win, this weekend it can set a tone obviously their car isn't suited to many of the tracks going into this mm -hmm. second part of the season but if they can secure these points getting second in the constructors is an absolute priority for them the drivers and constructors first place is probably gone 
but they've basically got to minimise their losses. So That's maximising okay. the circuits that are good for them, they've got to cash in on that. Uh, do we kind of look at who we think will be the best rookie of the weekend? Yeah, so uh, should we do one to four or just one? what you want in for this one? Oh, one to four. One to four, okay, so I'll hmm. we'll go first. Yeah, go first. For my rookies this weekend, number one, Lando Norris is going to bring in that qualifying performance that we've been seeing, backing it up in the race. Second place, I think Alexander Albon is going to have a fantastic race. It's just qualifying I'm a little bit unsure with because of being new to the Red Bull car. Third, that man George Russell. He's going to have a good weekend. I can feel it. Williams over the summer break. They're going to have done some magic. Maybe not. We never know with Williams really. But George Russell is going to perform well this weekend. And I just don't see Giovinazzi having the sort of performance this weekend that is expected of him. So he is going to be number four for me. And for me, guys, number one, I am going to put Alexander Albon. I think the more time this has taken for it to settle in, the more I think it's quite a good move for Red Bull and the more I'm excited at the prospect of Alex and seeing Alexander Albon in this Red Bull and seeing what he can do. So I'm going to back him to do actually really well in Spa and hit the floor running. Um, hit the floor, hit the ground running, that's the same. I mean, the floor and the ground space is the same thing. Anyway, two is going to be that man, Lando Norris, in the orange papaya of the McLaren and I, he's just been consistently at the top end of the rookies, I think, been brilliant. So, yeah, me and Ashley agree on one and two, but it's just we switch the order around. So, third for me is George Russell, and it is going to be really interesting to kind of see where Williams are. Obviously, they had that fantastic performance last time out with George Russell, um, out on merit, out qualifying um, to Racing Point and Alfa Romeo, and out driving them in the race. And that was absolutely superb to see. It'd be interesting to see whether they can carry that success into Spa, or whether kind of normal order for the season's been restored and it will be 19th and 20th but I'm sure he's had a good summer break I'm sure he's relaxed I think he's still going to do really well this weekend in that Williams and then that again means I think Giovinazzi will be fourth and I'm going to think I still think he's going to be a good performer I think he might even get a points finish but I think comparative to the others and also the fact that we banned Giovinazzi into the rookie, but obviously he was involved in F1 in the 2017, so therefore we probably judge him a little bit more harshly because he has had some F1 experience before these three as well. So, yeah, and also he has the best mentor in F1 in terms of Kimi Raikkonen. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, they, there's our rookies. Um, Predictions. Should we go for our ones to watch for the weekend? We can do. Yeah, so should we just start off with a driver each first and then team it? Yeah, I think we should, yeah. That works well for me. So, who do you want to go first? I'll let you go first, Ashley. Okay, driver to watch this weekend is Pierre Gasly. I've got a feeling that being back in the Toro Rosso for him is going to be like a breath of fresh air. He's back in a car that he knows he's performed well in and in an environment where there is that little bit less pressure to perform. So I think he is going to have a fantastic weekend and we're going to see the quality of driver that he is that we haven't seen so far this season. And my driver to watch is going to be Daniel Ricciardo. I think Renault really need a big performance and I think Daniel Ricciardo really needs a big performance because they are pumping a lot of money into, well, their goal was to be trying to catch the top three. And at the moment, they're just trying to catch McLaren in fourth place. At the very least this season, they need to finish fifth in the Constructors' Championship. So I'm backing Ricciardo to kind of dig deep and get a strong points finish for Renault this weekend. 
and my team to watch is going to be Haas. So Gunter Steiner has come out and said that this weekend both cars will be running the new spec aero package that has been driven by Kevin Magnussen in, well, been driven, he's been driving that since Silverstone, whereas Grosjean's been in their original spec. He's come out and said that they've had a few refinements to it and feel that they've finally identified the issues that they have and feel they are rectified. So for me, if they can get their weekend right, it will be a big result for them. So Haas will be the team to watch for me. And for me guys, Racing Point are going to be the team that I'm going to back to look. They had those big upgrades sequence coming over three races uh, over Silverstone, Hockenheim and Hungary just before the summer break. They have been a team in the past that have consistently proven that they perform beyond the kind of limitations of their budget and I feel with Checo, if uh, you haven't watched our kind of F1 play predictions, I uh, predicted Checo to finish highest out of that kind of second band of rest of the rest. Um, but I'm going to back Checo to get a points finish. And I know if you guys watched our kind of mid season ratings, our Lance Stroll bashing um, of his things, he also could have a strong weekend. This, I feel like this might be the weekend we see the benefits of that um, racing point upgrades and obviously it was a track that we've said they did very well at last year. Um, and that would bring us on to the bit where we get to have a bit of fun. Oh yeah! It is our, well, it's prediction time. Uh, yeah. We need to think of a catchier name for it than just predictions. Duh. but. Yeah, I mean, comment below if you have any catchy um, comment uh, titles for our prediction time rather than literally prediction time. Uh, so yeah, I think probably I should start. On yeah, this on one. this one definitely. This one. So there, my first. We make. Oh god, it's been a while. It's been that long of a summer break. Do we make three kind of crazy yep. outlandish predictions? So they don't have to be crazy no, outlandish. They just normally end up being that way. Yeah, they they generally do. So prediction number one, obviously, um, is could potentially be out there. Although it's a car to suit, but they haven't won a Grand Prix this year. Is that Ferrari will win this year's race at Spa? Prediction number two. Although I have predicted on the F1 play app, I'm going to say Carlos Sainz will not finish best of the rest in that Formula 1.5 region. And you're now going to make me say who? Was, Danny Rick. I wasn't going to, but... No, well, I've, I've said it now, I've forced myself into it. It's out there, it's in the public domain, Danny Rick. I've said it, he's my one to watch for the driver. He's going to finish sixth. You've got one more. Seventh. Seventh. Oh, I'd, yeah, one more. And last one, I'm going to say that there will be a double points finish for Racing Point. Okay. I'm going to go with two teammates colliding and ending their race. Are you going to put a name on these teammates or are they known to mystery and keeping your options open? Oh, I can keep my options open, but... Playing the field. I like yeah. it. I, yeah, I just see a set of teammates in each other. Potentially the Renaults, but that's not a prediction. That's just a potential. Um, I'm then going to go for a bit of a weird one. But I'm, like going to go, I'm going to go for a repeating front six. Oh. So, if you saw our F1 place predictions, my podium was Hamilton, Vettel, Albon. Correct. So, I'm going to say that the top six is going to finish Hamilton, Vettel, Albon, Bottas, Leclerc, Verstappen. 
taking that uh, grid penalty for that change of power unit and struggling to make yeah, the Yeah, actually, we, we should put it out there. I have predicted that Red Bull will take the the yeah. engine, the grid penalties for a he, replacement. He isn't completely mental. So it's, that's not that me Alex just... Alex Albon on merit is out qualified Max Verstappen there. No, no. So... Mad! So when you think of that, that's for that prediction. And then... Would it be five places or ten places? It's his first one, so... Yeah, it'd be ten, five. A ten? ten it's his first one, isn't it? Oh, look, this is where penalties are confusing. I can't remember. Oh, well, he's going to get a grid penalty. It's that, affecting that, his race. That should be the next prediction. Yeah. But it won't be because that's cheating. I will go for... Don't look at me, I've done mine. A Williams. Let's get into Q2. I mean... It will be George Russell yeah, if yeah, there I'm, is one. So you might as well just, I might as well just George say Russell. George Russell will get into Q2 this weekend. I, he deserves it based on his qualifying performances recently, and I would just like to see him have an opportunity to get into Q2. So there we go. I've been out there with my predictions, as I normally am. So we usually do, guys. But anyway, guys, that rounds up our preview pretty nicely, doesn't it? It does, yes. And Hopefully, like you guys, we we are just so excited that F1 is back. And a reminder for you guys of how we cover things over an F1 weekend. So, uh, obviously, you've had these two uh, preview slash prediction videos today. Um, we, on Friday, are going to start our new feature, which is going to be F1 Weekly News, where we're going to give a roundup of the weekly news, hopefully be able to kind of mention something on that kind of power unit issue coming out tomorrow. At our usual time, we like to release at 5pm. Then straight after qualifying, I will be going live for you guys uh, for about 15, 30 minutes over, rounding up qualifying, rounding up practice. And if you guys are involved in the kind of chat there, maybe answer a few questions if you are about. And then on Sunday, we will both be watching the race, but Ashley will be doing a uh, race reaction. That'll be out a little bit later on the Sunday. Monday, we will be doing our driver ratings. And on Tuesday, as always, guys, you will be getting our full race review podcast where we look in all the incidents of the race nice and in detail. And obviously, it is a back-to-back -back race weekend, so then it's like, rinse and recycle and repeat you're not getting rid of us anytime soon <laughs> we will be back <laughs> um, but guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up and naturally make sure to press the subscribe button so that the videos that we are putting out there are going into your inbox and if you press the bell icon that is next to it you will get a notification when one of our videos goes live and that means you'll be able to see what we are talking about this week as soon as it's live. And guys, don't forget to get involved in the comments below. Tell us how excited you are that F1 is back, the action is back. Let us know your kind of thoughts on the preview, what you think uh, may happen in this weekend's Grand Prix, and um, what, what you think your kind of ones to watch are this weekend. It'd be exciting to hear what you guys think. Do you agree with ours or disagree with ours? But F1 fans, you remember, keep racing. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the preview. Aren't we just all glad that F1 is back after that three week break? If you guys are new around here, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel by clicking here. If you wanted to keep up with what we thought uh, was the first half of the season, a really good half, you can watch the mid-season review up here or maybe check out our mid-season ratings. I'll put part two to a video just down here. Thanks for watching guys.